Uh, I always believe the only two cuisines in the world. Yes. Yeah, so one is a good one, and one is a bad one. It doesn't matter what concept you're using. Yes. Okay. End of the day, it's what's on the plate. Yes. It's well cooked, beautifully presented, and you know it tastes fantastic. For me, that's good food. What is Mossimans? It's an old church converted into a restaurant, in fact, a private dining club. It was converted about 50 years ago. 50. I've been here 13 years and changed again everything when I came. The bar, uh, <clears throat> the private rooms. So you have to be a member or invited by a member to come and dine here. For me, it's my life. Every experience I collected all over the world, uh, on my trips, on my working situations, whatever, it's in here. Why cooking? I always loved it. I learned cooking when I was a child with my father and my mother. They were oh, trained it's... chefs. So this, is, this is in Switzerland? Back in Switzerland, that's right, yeah. So I went to the market with my father, for instance, selecting all the fruits, the vegetables, and yeah. the, the smell of freshly baked bread. I learned that style of cooking when I was an apprentice. There was a classical cuisine, yes. of course, in a very moderate way. When I went to Villar, of course, it was in a big way. I mean, the best only, you know, the best ingredients, the most expensive ingredients, the foie gras, the truffles, and you, you name it. Everything was there. You're really known for <clears throat> your revolution in gastronomy rather than for your evolution in gastronomy. That came a bit later. After Montreux, I went to Saint Moritz, yes. worked at the famous Palace Hotel with a man called De France, who was the head chef, Monsieur De France. In fact, De France worked in London at the Savoy Hotel with Escoffier. Oh, really? Escoffier was the head chef and De France was the commie. God, how old was this guy? He was 85 years of age. I mean, just incredible. What was so special about Escoffier? Escoffier brought things on paper. He put in a line, an organization, a name, so you knew exactly you know, what to expect. But uh, before that, was there a structured concept of gastronomy? There was, but not as, as clear as Escoffier did. Escoffier then really cleared it up somehow. I mean, there were chefs there before him, like Carré and everybody else, but yes, Escoffier put it in a framework afterward. But then I went to Japan. And of ah. course, that was then where you know, I really broke through. I mean, Japan was a tremendous experience for me. What was it about the Japanese style of cooking, or concept of cooking? that was very different to you? The freshness, the, the, the way it's cooked or not cooked at all, yes. the presentation, yes. I mean, all that really was an eye-opener eye for all of us. Yes. But especially for me, because I absorbed a lot from that system. And uh, that's where then I start thinking, I said, you know, hey, you know, that is a way of eating, and yes. I like it. Uh, no cream, no butter. In fact, you know, at the Palace Hotel in Moritz, we used gallons of cream every single day and kilos of butter. Yeah, you just, you smell that. So you just, you just seal it. Finish in the oven, cook pink. Yeah. So we should keep your own baby vegetables and chili coriander sauce. When you take away the cream and butter, what do you use then as the conduit of flavor in your cooking? You see, you don't have to necessarily, because you, you steam your food, you grill your food, yes. you poach your food, so you don't necessarily need fat to do that. Right. And of course, then you have the real answer of taste. You have the honest flavor of a, a chicken, of a piece of fish, or whatever. I mean, a steamed fish, it's a tiny bit of olive oil, a few tomatoes, a bit of herbs. Fantastic, fresh, honest, healthy, great food. first started saying these things and thinking these things, what was the reaction amongst your chef contemporaries? They must have thought you were nuts at the time. I'm sure they did. Uh, some of them certainly did. But, but where were you when you first started espousing the 
this concept? I was in London. So that's when you were at the Dorchester Hotel, that's right. Yes. Yes. Some of them obviously couldn't quite see it because they didn't believe in it, they didn't know the concept. But once they have experienced the food, yes. they said, hey, you know, that is really good food. In the olden days, when you covered everything with heavy thick sauces, cream, butter... It was camouflage. Exactly, a lot. Today you don't. You just take the best piece of fish, put it in a steamer, after three minutes take it out, put it on a plate, a bit of garnish. Wow, that's great. You know, that's food for me. We do a lot of uh, outside catering, special events. I mean, as you know, we got the I got the Royal Warrant Holder by oh, appointment yes. Yes. by Prince Charles. So we do a lot of work for himself and his uh, members, his friends. Yeah, but uh, how many ways can you serve eggs and bacon? Though that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit more than that. In fact, we have a party today at the James Palace, which is very nice. I'm very pleased to be there, and also a party at number ten today as well. So there we are. When you did the Red Cross Ball, what was the actual brief for that? The brief was people that actually had dinners in all different parts of London yes. and then came together, about 800 of them, to have a dessert buffet. Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, my Lords and Ladies and Gentlemen, please raise up for Her Majesty Queen Arabia of the Hesperian Kingdom of Jordan.